Welcome to TEDx Cape Town's Intersections of Change Digital Program. These online conversations give us an opportunity to connect with our TEDx community and to learn more about how they are adjusting to a COVID-19 world. I'm Renal Smithway, the Ambassador of Buzz at TEDx Cape Town. And for this event, I'm honored to be facilitating conversations with four talented African artists, including Rushdin Jazz, Malim Wevi, Winslow Stolfek, and Zolani Mahola. Now, if you've ever been to a TEDx Cape Town event, you would know that when you enter our venues, you are welcome with sounds and creative expressions by talented African artists. And that's what we are aiming to achieve with this event. We invite you to experience conversations of how creativity has inspired hope for our artists. It's a creative journey of self-reflection. I trust that you will not only enjoy the sounds, but also that you will receive the message. Not sure this body ever thought to be home body. This body traveled mercilessly, seeking home in somebody until nothing and nobody could fix the home in me. Rest body. Here body, my body, home body. It stretches more now. Like cats without the need for an appointment. Long breaths. Purposely slow, not short with FOMO, not rusty with old obligations, not wheezy with convenient foods, not wasteful with doubt. No. Long, restful breaths. Resting at home that doesn't always have the answers. And definitely not the words to ease anyone's pain. Words that are often never laced with the intentions you think you have. Had I allowed words though, well then maybe, maybe I'd know them well. Now, digging well deep where the water has never felt so effortless. Gamps said something about rest once. He's been resting in peace and power since... 1982. I reckon because of truths we didn't accept then and aren't now either. Here, at home, in a rest that was given to us. My throat wiped with patience, warm with silence, held, protected with faith. Resting urgent solution because who am I to know one for everyone especially when I couldn't find my own one <laughs> oh I cringe and laugh at and with myself all the time dear friends lovers teachers relatives I'm sorry if I ever shared my entitled solutions with you I like to think it was out of love, but I think I might have been filling up space with distraction and stuff. I used to overeat, you know, on purpose, because emptiness seemed unsuccessful or whatever. It was me, without my love, truly, and me without rest. I hear my deceased brother gracefully laugh at me too. He has answers now, and so I believe. <laughs> and he sees humor in watching us try to figure everything out all the time. His chuckle through pouted lips gives my urgency some rest. Rest once. Put it all to bed for once. Sleep once. Stay in bed for once. And now. Oh, my, my emptiness is, um, is like nothing I can describe. My poetry can't even go there. But I'm grateful for the emptiness, that I know. And she's grateful 
with the empty streets, the empty schools, the empty planes, the empty seas. Be empty, she said. I need a rest, she said. I've never been so far away from my thoughts. Like bugs, they come and go. Like a child, I observe them move. Like meditation, I let them fall off the edge. I'm safe at home, to roam every corner without an inkling of judgment or the aftermath, a possible lingering guilt, discomfort, anxiety, anger, confusion, blah, blah, blah. No pity, just parties in our kitchen, garlic on the stove. The husband who tries to dance kizomba for me. I'm safe at home, even a little outside. A relatively safe Hochland Park sunset walk, as I seeing families jogging, the elderly or the athletes pushing, and cheers from a sympathetic passerby. With my face half covered, I'm even safe from having to force an expression that doesn't feel very honest. Resting. Everything. Oh. I think I took a breath with the earth the other day. I think I felt her ribs loosen, crackling like the cobblestone beneath my feet as I stroll. I remember my favorite childhood chocolate dancing around my tongue, crackling. I had the time to remember, the time to taste. Anyway, her ribs lifted like my elbows were. She seemed to have invited me for a ride. If I was kind, which I never lied. I can't lie. Truth. This lockdown has been heavenly for me. But I think I know a little. That a house with hungry kids isn't easy. A relationship that sees no breaks, only beatings. An isolated relative that can't go home. The dark, without electricity. A twitch only alcohol has fixed so far. A heart that never knew its trauma. And so painfully, people, parents, craving the calluses that buffer the pains of their labor. And that cycle. Well, maybe that cycle should rest, no? Blaming Corona for these struggles. Corona doesn't discriminate. But it does. Because we do. Those that don't have the choice. But to work. And risk it anyway. Overpopulated homes. No medical aid. No transport money. No. Well, just no. A lot of no's. Following them. Yelling at them. Shooting at them. Like us. Because how are we here? How to be alive? Blaming Corona. <laughs> Aren't we just interesting? Addicted to blaming, punishing, and distracting ourselves from the fruits of responsibility, accountability, and togetherness? From growth? I'm thinking that maybe, maybe we've been thieving ourselves from sweetness. Our leaders quick to wear the ever-fashionable pandemic, when surely the crisis is in corruption, the gluttons sticking their greasy fingers into the feasts of the people they set out to feed. Maybe less greed in politics, and more greed for time and rest and home. Maybe then we know more of what we need, not want. Maybe so well 
that a separate definition for the two would become redundant. Capitalism can't defeat us. It never has the most of us. And borders are bizarre and bureaucratic, and the laws that insist on one belief are, well, I'm just saying that I've never been happier to mind my own business. Never felt as unfazed with not being needed. Never felt so ready to hug myself. Never been so good at letting go. Never felt so rested. I think I'm sick, though. I can only be. Breathing in air that must be dirty after all the strange things we go through. I'm sick, and I think I always will be. And I'm okay with that. I've accepted the damage. But where to now? And with how much effort? And from what capable place am I? Maybe a little rest, though. Maybe. Maybe. Rest. Rest. A human right. Take a moment to pause to just acknowledge that performance by Mel Moivi during lockdown. You're going to bring Mel up to connect with me. Mel Moivi is a creative, a storyteller, a singer songwriter, performance poet, and an actor. And she joins us all the way from Dirk. Mel! That was so beautiful. Hey. Wow. <laughs> I have to thank you for joining us all the way from Windhoek. Mm -hmm. Of course. Thank you for inviting me. I have to tell the audience that one thing I know about you is that you believe in honest stories that bring the soul home through sharing, connection, resonance, and empathy. As you believe that only through exposure to and understanding ourselves can each and each other can we find peace. Yeah. So rest a human right. How did that even start? Like where did that begin? <laughs> um, so the National Theatre of Namibia uh, called on artists to respond artists in Namibia to respond to human rights during this pandemic. Um, and I hadn't been creating much, uh, actually. I was on lockdown before lockdown on my own sort of personal journey with rest um, and what it meant for me. And then, and then I just honestly had a, I, I don't think I've ever actually edited that poem. It was completely free flowing and honest, uh, like a diary entry almost. And, um, and then we decided to make a short film with it. My husband and I, Mark Namushenje, who's also a fantastic artist, visual artist, producer, everything, the man's and everything man. Um, and then we started recording bits and pieces and we put it together and we handed it in. Um, it was difficult for me to speak on human rights because I was quite isolated. And I knew initially I felt like, okay, this calls for a very political message about how I know in Namibia, um, our leaders aren't doing the best they can for our people right now. And I mean, we can, there are all of these different things that we can call out, call in. Uh, but I had been so removed from that, and I knew that speaking on human rights really had to come from a very personal place, and that's that's how it sort of flowed into what this is. Um, Martin Amushenje, I'll write it down. Oh, I can't believe I just multitasked and was able to read and chat at the same time. <laughs> yeah, that's the nice thing about the Crowdcast platform is that you're able to connect with the audience while we yeah. are having a conversation. So part of the poem that struck me was the, the two lines that say, Corona does not discriminate, but it does because we do. Mm. Those that don't have a choice, 
but to work and risk it anyway. What was mm -hmm. your reaction? Uh, what, what was the response from audiences after you released that poem? I mean, it's, it's quite a powerful line. Yeah, um, it's interesting. I don't really know what everybody's reaction was. Partially my fault because I haven't been very engaging, but also um, because it was just shared and then the rest, every, all I know is that people felt fairly relieved when they saw the poem and as they shared it, they said, this is a necessary poem to see, uh, please check it out. And they, you know, shared a lot of love in that way. Um, what I can say is that the general conversation on that is, um, is everywhere right now because we want to, we're so quick to say that, um, yeah, this time, you know, the pandemic doesn't discriminate and everybody's in danger and what, 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 but that's really not the reality at the end of the day. When something like this starts to spread, we all know that lower class groups struggle the most. Anyone that's in like dense populated spaces struggle. Those that really don't have the choice but to go and hustle anyway, regardless of the risk of getting sick. Uh, because without the hustle, there is no food on the table. These are all things we need to take into consideration. Um, I, it seems to me like most of the audience today is also from South Africa. So we fully, we know so well that uh, class is related to race. Everything is intersec intersectional. And so, yeah, I, it, was, it was mainly just to touch on pandemic has only the pandemic and COVID-19 has just given us a lens to once again see all the sore spots um, not to remind us because well okay not to shock us or say hey by the way this is because it's always been happening but um, yeah I, I think did I answer your question I can no, go on for <laughs> I'm allowing you to, to express yourself because you've got such a beautiful way of expressing your thoughts and I, I really enjoyed watching the audience's reaction during the visual poem. Uh, it was really powerful and thought-provoking for me, just, you know, as, as the host this evening. But I want to ask you, what is what has lockdown taught you about yourself during that process of creating the visual poem? Yeah. Um, oh, wow. Uh, so much. Really so much. <laughs> and I think, I think the... The main thing is just sort of really figuring out where you are with yourself and what you're capable of and what and what what and making sure that your offering is coming from an authentic capable place um you know so i think the lockdown has taught me how to truly rest how to truly truly kick back my feet and just I just feel the earth beneath me think that on the other side, if I were to draw a hole down and go out the other end, you know, just wander, have your mind wander like you used to when you were a child where you would stare at that curtain in your house and it would make weird patterns and eventually you'd see animals in them. I've stopped doing that. We've stopped wandering the way we do as kids. And when I've now with this lockdown, it's allowed me to sort of see that and it's allowed me to feel what ultimately I want and which is just warmth and safety and authenticity and strength and freedom within responsibility and accountability to feel like I can just move regardless of the pain or uh, history um, mm -hmm. on our shoulders or our mistakes. What can I, yeah, you know, so <laughs> just the remembering the texture of what it means to be human and with that when I remember the texture and I'm not saying I always do it's it's a fall get up fall get up situation but remembering the texture of what it means to be human is allows us I think it gives us what we need to truly connect to the rest of humanity and from that place I want to be active in whatever we can do to heal and ensure that all of us, because deeply when we feel that bliss and when we are truly happy and rested, we want the rest to have the same. Everybody deserves that ultimately at the end of the day. And um, I feel the lockdown has taught me that. So I'm not working from a peaceful, rushed place. I'm working from a really deeper, like a, a slower, capable 
place of trying to offer my most authentic, most capable love. <laughs> That's beautiful, beautiful. Uh, I'm sitting here wondering what's next for Mal. Where to from here? Like, what can we expect from you? Oh, geez. I don't know. There are all of these exciting things that are happening. I'm just sort of trying to let it flow. Um, Martin Amushenja and I and my cousin E. Tanner was good are writing a film at the moment so that's exciting i'm finalizing a play with my good friend Indali. um i'm also working on an interesting sort of uh like fashion brand that is focused on sparking conversations around mental health so there are quite a few things and i'm just sort of i'm also massaging i'm a masseuse and i'm learning about um my body more and more but those are the things for the most part i don't know we will see we'll let it flow <laughs> so we are definitely going to share your facebook page with everyone so they can stay posted on what you're going to be up to thank, uh, you. thank you thank you thank you for sharing your journey and thank again you so much, activity that inspires hope thank you mal, mm -hmm. mal so much love thank you everyone the next the next video is candle jam quickly tell us about candle jam oh I thought that was a good buy. I was waiting for me to go off screen. I was like, this is awkward. Oh, okay. Candle Jam is uh, just a wee song uh, that it's a jam. It really came from a jam and there were candles and everything you hear in it is pretty much what happened on the spot. And then it became a whole song with one of my closest friends called Teishu. Also check him mm -hmm. out um, on Instagram, guys. He's, he's oh, Teishu. I put it down in the comments um and so yeah we made this and it's basically just how coming together and letting it flow musically can do so much healing for all of us involved and on that note we are going to candle jam thank you mal <laughs> <laughs> wow hmm. i'm having a moment candle jam will come up right now at the next track Where we work, say it, spill it, all the words, all the drums, all the dances and tight. You can't plan this, my people. I'm sure you understand this. Come through and bring your bank dances. Hearts out, roll and let's jam this. We will get there. We will get there. We 
find clarity out on the table away with calamity let the music do its business sit back and just witness the magic known to soon bringing us to the same room same place same time same pace same mind we'll find You are the first artists on our TEDx Cape Town virtual stage. Wow. What right. a great company, that's all I can say. Incredible. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. That's cool. That's cool. Like that. We're on the same journey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we are. Yeah, we are. I felt all of you so much. <laughs> no, you know what I love? I love that we were all, like, we're speaking for one voice. The more I'm listening to this, I've had this exact thought. I've gone through this exact thing. We mm. can't ignore the synchronicity there is mind blowing. <laughs> <laughs> indeed, indeed. So when you ask the first question that's been uploaded to all the artists, how do you get yourself in the zone for creativity? Do you have special rituals or routines? Let's start with Zolani, Mal, Justine, Winslow to answer that question. Okay, well, I, I, I feel like it's a not, not like a short sprint. So there's like things that I feel like I continuously have to do, like meditation, um, like, like real self-care practices to, to be able to keep myself able to get into that creative space space of flow so it's difficult for me to like it's, it's, yeah just to be creative 
for like a, a short a short stint you know what i mean like i it relies on me taking care of myself for yeah for a period Mal, what do you do to get into the i feel like I feel like my creativity interrupts my life all the time. I could be driving and with and then I would like have to do something about it immediately. <laughs> so it comes in as a wind and I often feel like I need to capture it otherwise it will pass me and it does. And I think that's the heartbreaking part about being an artist is that I think we do have these ideas and they feel so real. We can taste them and then the stress of the day happens. You go home and you you can't even remember what the melody was or what that line that sparked that thing was so it can be quite heartbreaking for me um but in terms of like making sh like trying to really put myself in a position where i can create um i would say tea is my number one everything every time it just helps me settle in and it reminds me i don't have to go anywhere right now because if i did mm -hmm. I wouldn't be drinking something that needs to cool down first. So I don't know. It's an automatic sort of we're here and let's see. Yeah. And then just cancel, cancel the plans for the day. Because once you get going, you really don't want to feel interrupted by another. Christine? I uh, have this thing called, you know, balancing the doing with some being. And so um, I have this deep affinity mm -hmm. I'm in nature, particularly Squirrel Park in, uh, in Wanderbosch off Kielgrim Road. Actually, I've gone on so many dates on that in this park. <laughs> that was my inner monologue. That was my inner monologue. <laughs> and, you uh, to see what's going on? I hear it. <laughs> I thought they go very really differently in my mind. Um, <laughs> um, in any event, I, I really just enjoy uh, connecting with nature, um, connecting with trees and plants, and just sitting there with my journal, reflecting, meditating. Um, and very often, like, because um, I always believe, you know, like, Creativity comes through me, not from me. And I always find when I'm in those those precious spaces, uh, um, um, all sorts of things emerge, insights, reflections, you know. Um, yeah. yeah. The nature. Yeah. What do you do to create big games? Um, <laughs> everybody, what everybody else has said, yes. Um, but you know what I've also done is I've cultivated a life that is conducive for the creativity. Do you know what I mean? I'm a plant parent, and especially when lockdown happened, when everybody else was rushing, running off the toilet paper, I was running to buy plants. I was like, I'm going to keep myself busy with potting soil on my balcony. And, and really just, you know, so cultivating that kind of life has worked for me. So what was challenging for me, in particular in the beginning of lockdown, was I couldn't go for a walk. Because that clears my brain in the morning so really cultivating that's a life that is conducive for creativity because also have other things that i do you know we all have other things that we do so i've always got a big book around that is my is this a3 mm -hmm. book that i've got white pages so that's for when the creativity hits i write it all down now so that's how i mitigate losing the thought mm -hmm. and then just giving myself moments where i'll be like okay so i record on sunday mornings that's my new thing so every okay. sunday morning I record and I've just been de developing habits because you have to. Otherwise, it's just all, there's so much that goes on. And yeah, that, you know, we're just busy people, I guess. But it's nice to just, I'm cultivating that space and saying, listen, my space has to be conducive to my spirit. And there's again that ownership. Yeah. I think we all do that. I'm sure all of us live in, I mean, Mal, I saw you live in a magical space, you know? So, Lani, there's lots of love around you. You know, that's, everything is good. Like, you have to cultivate the space for it. Mm. Mm. Thank you for sharing that. I love all these responses. It's so inspiring. But the next question yeah. is an interesting one. Storm is asking, how do you work through bouts of doubt and pick yourself up in the day just to create? Yeah. No, I mean, that's, 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 that's an amazing, that's a, great question i agree storm um i i, I mean there, there there are ways one way that i am that i've been using of late is um is finding out where that voice comes from um mm -hmm. you know i I've, i feel like i've been going through a process of remembering myself um and 
really figuring out where my story has changed or where I've picked up which storyline and which part of me, how, how old I was when, from, from whence that doubt is speaking kind of thing and almost putting a character on that. So for me, like one of my character, my doubt characters is like a little shark. You know, um, I think Winslow mentioned RuPaul's saboteur, internal saboteur. That's like for me, like it's khebe, khebe in this process is a shark. There's a little shark that comes around and says like, you're not good enough. You know, you, you know, you, you, you're not relevant or you're not whatever, all this, all this bullshit. And, and so, and so really identifying where that voice is coming from and either sitting down and negotiating with that, with physicalizing, because when we put it in the body, it like it 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 it, it makes it, it. I don't know. There's something about the process. So like physicalizing that shark, and you feel that shark. What's that shark like? You know what I mean? Or, or that child, or that whoever it was who started with that voice, physicalizing it, seeing it, um, interacting with it, either kicking that shark to the curb or saying, you know, let's talk about this. You know, okay, you were six years old, and this happened, and that's why you have that experience. That's that. That's where you're talking from. Um, what can we do <laughs> yeah a lot yeah they, they're but it, it's it's a, it's real doubt is self-doubt is real um but you can decide you're in charge it's your story it's your life yeah i'm going to invite everyone else to, to like share you know how do you work through your doubt now um oh it's still a process for me. It's not like I have any sort of ritual that keeps me going. I must say that um, I've been quite a nomad for the past few years. And so it hasn't sort of allowed me to build a routine that can sort of keep me. And I'm, I'm going to be completely honest and say that I'm, I'm struggling even presently. So it's not like I have uh, anything in particular, but I can say that my loved ones, my goodness, the support system that I have, my family, my mm -hmm. friends, having real conversations with them, feeling so held. Um, and also just when you, and my brother used to say this a lot as well, it is when you look around you and, and the friends that you keep, that helps you remind you how brilliant you are, because that's technically who you've decided to decorate your life with and who have been attracted to your space. So surely I'm doing something right if I've got all these incredible people around me. And that definitely helps me going in general, regardless of how nomadic I am. But I can't say there's any specific ritual just yet. I'm still finding mm -hmm. that. Awesome. Winslow, how do you work through your doubts? Um, that's such a, well, that's a question, eh? Um, I think in, yeah, just to agree with um, Zolani, you have to confront it at times. You have to figure out where that voice comes from, um, what, which memory is it attached to, what did you go through, what is that trauma that sits there, you know? And, and, and be ready to confront it, you know, because that is really self-doubt is keeping you from being as great as you want to be. And we all deal with it. I deal with it constantly. Even putting out sugar water, I did it so silently because I was like, I just give it a soft landing <laughs> and it'll do what it does. <laughs> because you know we still go through it but then there's yeah hey i don't know guys that I, I maybe it's just something that we just all have to face and it's something that just really forces us to want to be artists to want to create or yeah. to want to push forward you know maybe it's part of the process keep us humble i don't know <laughs> but i think we all go through it you know some of us have yeah. just been we just some of us just confronted head on <laughs> um, because we have to, because the, the, the need to say what we need to say, to tell our stories, um, yeah. is, is more important than that voice, you know? Yeah. So, I'd like to also just quickly check in with Rishin. Rishin, in your session, you talk about pie. Yeah. What you so pie is most definitely... <laughs> So pies most definitely is, is, is something that I, I literally was being very serious when I said I have a reminder on my phone. One o'clock, the notification goes off and it says, Rushdin, do a pie check-in, <laughs> you know? And um, it's, it's so powerful because like Zulani, just to echo her sentiments, you've got to recognize, you can't change something that you don't recognize first, you know? That's the one thing. The other thing for my cancer journey is, um, you know, since 
September 2012. For some reason, I don't attach to outcomes anymore. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, the, the cliche, let go and let God. So it's like, if I have a meeting with Joe at Cavendish and he doesn't rock up, you know, and then like Stephen Covey's quote comes in my mind and says, Rushdin, there are no such thing as problems, only opportunities. And I'm like, okay, cool. I'm going to pay some of my account. I'm in Cavendish. You know what I mean? So it's like, <laughs> so I think it's about um, definitely, A, you, you can't change something if you don't, you don't acknowledge first. Definitely pies helps you pull yourself towards yourself. And then it's mindset execution, you know, and then last but not least, you know, um, and I'm going to quote Tony Robbins now because I absolutely love Tony Robbins, which is around true north on the campus will always be gratitude. And he says, if we are to get beyond scarcity, then we need yeah. to stop. Then we need to start beyond scarcity. And that means taking a moment to value and appreciate the precious things that we are privileged to have in our lives right now, you know, and then act from awareness. Mindfulness, not perfection. Balance, not perfection. Progress, not perfection. So I, I'm aware of the fact that we've got quite a few questions, but I'm going to focus on our time is of the essence. Uh, we want to make sure that everyone uh, gets an opportunity to quickly respond to some of these questions. So instead of doing a round of thoughts, I'm going to just pick a few questions that I'll kind of popcorn to there for people. And uh, I feel like we've already responded to Eloise's question on a coping strategy. I think all of you have touched on how you've managed during lockdown. So uh, we'll, we'll serve that question. But I see that here's a, a question in terms of, do you experience any internal struggle between wanting to speak to larger causes and messages in your art and simply wanting to create just people that are art? And um, is there anyone that would really like to answer that question? Because I feel like if we can have one response to that, that would be amazing. The internal struggle between speaking to a cause versus actually just creating for the love of art. I'm going to pop one to Zalakini. I, I saw a nod in your head there. Oh, I, I thought Mel. I thought Mel. Mel, Mel was nodding to to take it. You were ahead. Hey? No, I was actually trying to find it because I think my internet is glitchy. I'm trying to find the question so I can read it. Sorry. <laughs> no, I, I think I think Renel to pick you up a little bit. I don't know. If, I, I think it's. Oh, I I I was struggling to pick you up a little bit. Um, the is is it the conflict between um sort of uh, a, a message or like like a public's what? Yeah, say it again. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Uh. How do you deal with that internal struggle between creating for cause, like you've done with your public service announcements, versus creating art just for the love of it and music for the love of it? Oh, well, I mean, you know, I, I, I feel like you know, for me personally, I feel like um, more and more my mandate is becoming clear. You know, like more and more like what what I feel like I stand for is becoming clear. and. And so it becomes easier to to align my my product, for want of a better word, my my art, with um, you know, with what what feels good to me, you know. So it so so it's so it's so like there's some equalization that that seems to be happening more and more. Um, you know, the the more that I think the more that we connect with our authentic selves, the more that. You know what what we produce is, you know, I, is is gonna be dope. What's <laughs> oh, up? Oh, sorry. I just wanted to say, you know, you know, it is the personal is political, man. You know, yeah. the personal is political. You know what you like you write from your perspective, you know, you, and that is what aligns your art and your purpose and your, your message and your purpose or your work and your purpose. Because the person is political. I'm a political statement because I choose to live the life that I live and say the things that I want to say, mm. you know, and express mm. my life, whatever that life is, you know, speaks to like, you know, the importance of, of, of queer stories being told from queer perspectives, mm. you know, to, yeah. to challenge. <laughs> You know, the stories that are being told, you know, and to really mm -hmm. say, okay, 
or ownership of, of spaces. Yeah. Anyways, sorry guys. I just like, I agree. I agree. <laughs> yeah. So there, there's a question specific to does storytelling from vantage point of queerness influence your work conceptually, technically, and artistically? Yo. Um, it does. <laughs> <laughs> you see me think today for like your question. <laughs> um, I think I just said it, you know, it's again that, that personal being political. What I was very aware of and conscious of during this project, and you'll see it through the writing, um, it opens with this piece, um, like men do, really confronting how we as, 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 as black men love you know, and, and, and the violent nature of that love and why that love is there. So it starts, but it also, it's still from a queer perspective, yeah. you know, because I also have to unlearn um, heteronormativity and, and all the socialization that I've been through that says that this yeah. is okay and that isn't okay. Um, so you, you, you write from your, I write from my own space. I write from where, what I know. And this is my story. So it's the story that is still did. And it also um, in the visuals as well, I was very conscious of showing skin because I wanted to say, you know, why can't, I can't, why can't I in the body that I'm in show some skin? Like, you know, because I want to make it provocative. You know, I've got a poem called um, Tall Order about how I like tall guys. And in each verse, I'm discussing the different types that I have. <laughs> And it's beautiful and fun, you know? And I'm like, wow, I'm here, I'm a queer, you know? Take note of me, hear my story. Give us an opportunity to tell the story. Mm. Beautiful. On that note, I want to thank all of you for sharing your journeys with us tonight. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Stay safe, stay healthy, and keep on creating for Twice. Thank you, everyone. Everyone. Cheers, Mark, Delaney, Christian, Winslow. What a powerful event. We thank you for choosing to spend your time with us tonight. We encourage you to act from awareness, to rest, and to discard the messages that are not in alignment with your personal truth so that you are able to wake up tomorrow and use your creativity to inspire hope and social change. Inspire us, show kindness. Spread the word, not the virus. Inspire us, unite us. Every mama that you can wash your hands, wash your hands, have a nice wash your hands. You can do it all you wanna. Do your best to not touch your face. Hey, listen, I'll tell you why it's this. Every spot that you touch, hand, hands, small hands, any hand could happen. So you got to keep your own to yourself. Come, run it! You can reach any place. Spread the word, not the virus. Spread the word to all you inspire Show kindness, kindness is your way. Spread the word, not the virus. Spread the word to all the Inspire world. us, unite us. Slap your hands in the air, touch your heart, show you care. Use your eyes, use a smile, many ways we can share. Wear a mask on your face, touch your heart, show you care. Use your eyes, use your smile, many ways. Ways we can share. Spread the word, not the virus. Spread the word to all. Inspire us. Show kindness. Kindness is your way. Spread the word, not the virus. Spread the word to all. Inspire us. Unite us. Now let's wash our hands for 20 seconds. One, One two, two, three, four, five, six, six seven. Eight. Eight, nine, nine, ten. ten. Now let's wash our precious hands for another ten. ten. Let's go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine ten. ten. Over, in between, and under. Oh, wow, look, look at your pretty hands. Keep your distance. Stay at home. Don't shake hands. You can call on the phone.
If someone's too close, just say, I cannot, you know, I might be fine, but my granny may not. And so we go. Spread the word, not the virus. Spread the word to everyone. Inspire us. Show kindness. Kindness is your way. Spread the word, not the virus. Spread the word to all. Inspire us. Unite us. Hello friends, my name is Bobo. Let's unite with Africa Tikkun. Wash your hands, wear your mask, and stay safe. Yeah.